Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Welcome back to the chaos zone that is my workspace right now. There's a lot going on here. Uh, in today's video, I've got you pointed at the corner a little bit because this is where I have my chisels now. And in today's video, we're going to be sharpening some chisels. You may have noticed, but you probably didn't, that I have very little hair left on this arm, whereas this guy, you know, is normal. Uh, that's what happens when I sharpen chisels. So if you ever see me with bald spots on my arms, it's because that's what I've been doing. So this isn't a sharpening tutorial per se. That's not the purpose of this. What we're going to be doing today is comparing a bunch of different sharpening equipment. For this one, I'm going to take you indoors. I didn't sharpen here. I sharpened on my counter in my kitchen because it's a little higher, a little easier to work with. And my wife wanted to watch a movie. Uh, which I don't do very often unless I'm doing something else at the same time. In this case, sharpening chisels. Let's talk just for a second about a couple of the different uh, things that we used. And then I'll explain that in more detail all in voiceover as you watch me sharpen and test these things. And we'll see what sharpening equipment works best. So there's a bunch of different sharpening stuff out there at a variety of price points. Uh, you can get hand sharpening tools. In fact, I, I keep one in my snowboard bag to sharpen my edges when I'm on the mountain. Stuff like that if I want to. But for the purpose of sharpening stuff in your shop, you want something sturdy, something you can work with. Now, I haven't looked at everything, of course. I think uh, Ben Crow from Crimson Guitars has done more sharpening videos using other systems like Scary Sharp and all that kind of stuff. But what I've got are a few that are relatively easy to find, and I can tell you where to find them. So, to start with, multi-diamond stone sharpening block thing. This is a worksmith. I think I got this from probably Home Depot or something, but the... The nice thing is you can find these in a lot of places. A lot of hardware stores carry them. Uh, a lot of tool shops carry them. And you can find them online too. So it's a multi-grit diamond stone. You'll find that this isn't excellent. It's actually not really perfectly flat. But it can get the job done. And it comes in this nifty carrying case that doesn't slip very easily. So all in one, you know. If you're, if you're just sharpening a few things and you're not super picky... This might be the option for you. If you're doing fine woodworking though, and you want to sharpen, you know, hand plane blades and, and chisels uh, to the point where you can shave your arm hair and really do a nice job of stuff, this probably isn't what you want. But you'll see how it tests out in a minute. Let's take a look at the other stuff that we're going to be using real quick here. These are bloody heavy actually, but these are also diamond stones. We've got coarse, medium, and fine. I don't know. They just look like pieces of metal. There's a tiny little bit of abrasive on there. Uh, these work as well, but they don't work for very long, or at least they don't seem to. They've got a limited life to them from what I can tell. So the other diamond stone that I just showed you had a little bit more longevity. These I've sharpened a few knives with, a few chisels, and I, I feel like they're starting to lose their effectiveness a bit. But at the same time, if you're willing to put the work on, or the work in rather, these should get the job done. We'll show you how these work in a minute as well. I pointed over there because that's where my kitchen is. This is my garage. Now we get into the messy stuff uh, for which you may want a tray and an agura stone to help you move a little quicker. When you've got a water stone, you store it in water. So I have a variety of water stones and a few, few different ones, of course. And these are what I'll call the next step up here, the next step on the list. And in particular, I've got a few of them. But in particular, these guys are available from Solo Music Gear. If you want something from Solo Music Gear, take a look at my link in the description. It's an affiliate link and it helps me out if you use it. I wish I had like infomercial music uh, to back that up. Anyway, these are the S-Plex, the Splex <laughs> stones. Really nice, really thick stones. So this will last a very long time. Let me contrast that with, you know, a multi-stone here that I got from a uh, kitchen supply store. These are for sharpening knives. I use these for chisels as well. It won't last as long, obviously, but a couple different grits. So there are some options, of course, available, but uh, these guys will last quite a while. And I have two of them here. I've got the 800 and the 1200. You can get really sharp with 1200. It's not, not the highest. You'll see in a moment that I've got up to 6,000 in my favorite stones. Um, but just two stones like that, 800 can allow you to take out a ton of imperfections. It just takes a little while. And 1200 can get sharp enough for you to do pretty much any kind of woodwork you want, especially 
if you're going to strop your stuff after, which I recommend you do. So those are a great option. Pretty messy, uh, but reasonably priced for water stones. And I think you'll find that they give you a better, better job at the end of the day than the diamond stones. Well, let's move on to the last one. I've got a few of these and these are my favorite. All right, I have several of these guys. Also from Solo Music Gear. These come in a case, so you don't need a specific thing to sort them out because they come in a non-stick, or sorry, a non-slip case thing that holds them already. They are double, so you get two different grits with the package. This one, for example, is 1,000 and 3,000 grit. The case holds water, so it keeps them hydrated because water stones need to be kept hydrated. But these stones, I think, are more durable. They're more durable than the other ones. Uh, and so having them a little thinner like this is not a problem. Again, I have a few of these. I have four, four separate double sets like this. So this one, for example, is 1,000 and 6,000. And 6,000 is where I finish my work and, and where I end up shaving my arm to make sure that everything is as it should be. These also come with the little Nagura stone that you rub on them to begin with to speed up the sharpening process. Again, you fill these things with water and it keeps the stones hydrated. So just an awesome setup and my favorite, the thing that, you know, I, I think that these work the best. These are the Swahiro. <laughs> this is why I didn't memorize the name because I can't pronounce it. S-U-E-H-I-R-O, Swahiro. Maybe the, I made that sound, they're Japanese. So I made that sound, uh, well, frankly, I made it sound Spanish or, or Mexican, uh, but, yeah, they're Japanese, they're an awesome stone, and I think they're probably about the only one that I'm going to be buying going forward. Again, if you're looking for these, same deal, solo music gear, there's a link in the description if you want to help me out. But that's enough intro. Let's take a look at how they perform. Let's do some sharpening. I've got a few different chisels, and uh, yeah, we'll test them out. You can see how these things perform, and make your own decision. So here's what we're working on today. We've got a variety of different chisels. Don't worry, I don't sharpen all of these on camera. I did end up sharpening them all because I wanted to and kind of needed them to be sharp, of course. Uh, but I just wanted to give you guys an idea of how each of those different stones, each of those different sharpening implements work. So we use all of them on various chisels and you'll kind of get a sense of which chisels I like the best as we go here. So. Again, we've got our two different kinds of inexpensive diamond stones. Now, bear in mind, there are expensive diamond stones out there. These just aren't them. Uh, we've got some other water stones that we're going to be taking a look at here. We're not going to go through the ones that are in the bucket there. Um, what we're going to go through are these new ones, these deluxe whetstones. And here are my favorites. Like I said, these are the Sigiro, I guess. Um, Cyrex Ceramic is what you're looking for on those. And you can find those on solomusicgear.com. Oddly enough, they're in the Files and Rasps section. Not sure what the deal is with that, but that's where you find the stones there. So let's get started with this kind of multi-tool here. If you're only going to get one stone and, uh, and you only sharpen things occasionally, this might be the one that you want. So I'm showing a few small portions of this at regular speed, but really I'm just kind of trying to blast through this. So we're going to do a bunch of this at 300 speed, 300%. Um, pretty straightforward you do one side at a time you get it as flat as you can make sure you got lots of contact points and you create a burr by abrading it on there the burr which we also sometimes call the wire edge flips up to the side that you're not basically sanding <laughs> against this stone and then you flip it over and take it off you flip it over and do it in the opposite direction and so I'm continuing to roll this stone item over because it's got various sides. I think I started with uh, coarse grit, not extra coarse, and then I moved to fine and very fine. And by the time I'm done with this, it's going to be real sharp. There's another step though. Uh, I use a strop and I have a two-sided strop here. You can get these on Amazon. Uh, they're easy to come across. And on one side I've got sharpening compound, just typical green sharpening compound. So I do that just pulling and I apply a little bit of pressure when I do it on the compound side and then I just gently do it on the bare leather side so it may look like I'm pushing a little bit but I'm really barely doing that and I end up with a pretty sharp 
chisel here, uh, sharp enough to remove hair, although it doesn't do it very easily, uh, which means it's not as sharp as I would do on some of my finer chisels. But these ones, these aren't my good chisels. These just came with a set, and I, I use them for, you know, rougher work involving a hammer and stuff like that. So they're not my best ones. I don't mind sharpening them on these kind of lesser sharpening implements, if you will. This is the next set I'm using. It's also diamond stones. These were very inexpensive. They came off Amazon. Um, they store nicely. They're very small, which is nice. They're heavy, which, I mean, doesn't really mean much. But what it does is it helps them stay in place. Um, the problem with these ones, and in particular the coarse one, because it grips more, is they move around a lot. It doesn't look like it here because I'm not... I'm not moving the chisel all that much and because this isn't the coarse one anymore. But they're just kind of sitting on like little almost cabinet door stops, little rubber stickies. So their ability to stay in place isn't as good as some of the other ones or really any of the other ones. But these work just fine and I, I would say by the time I'm done with this, these stones are a little flatter. So I end up with just as good if not a little better of a finish than the other diamond stone that I was just using. The only difference is, uh, as I said before, I get the sense from these that they maybe don't last quite as long, which is interesting. Diamond stones are supposed to last quite a long time, but you know, these are an inexpensive option. You can probably buy several of these for the price of a really good diamond stone, so maybe you can afford to go through a few. Um, again, I do the stropping because I think that that's an important part, especially when you're using these kind of more inexpensive sharpening implements and I end up with a nice finish on that nicer and flatter probably than the other one so here again you can see I can pull some hair off my arm with this uh, but it's not it's not great it doesn't spring off there real quick like it does when you do a really good job so I'm gonna do the Cerax ones next because when I'm actually filming this uh, which is well before I do this voiceover. Uh, the other ones are actually in the process of hydrating. So these Cerax ones I did have in water, but the others I just had in the boxes, and they need quite a while, actually. You're supposed to put them in water for a few hours and wait until the little bubbles stop coming out of them. So that's what I'm doing with them. I've got them in water. And I'm using my favorite chisels on my favorite stones. That probably comes as no big surprise. Uh, again, I have four of these Cerax combo stones. I only use two of them for this demo. Uh, you just pick the grits that you want, but I only need two of them to get basically from uh, a well-used chisel to a perfect finish that I'm prepared to work with. And with these chisels, I do a lot of fine work. So I want to make sure that this is really nice and sharp. What you want to avoid on these ones, they're, they're nice and hard, they're a durable stone, but you can still gouge the surface if you're not careful. So I've shown you on this stone so far exclusively regular speed. We're not doing any speeding up yet, although we're about to. And what I'm doing is I'm applying more pressure on my way back when I've got the chisel angled like this than I am uh, when I move forward, because when I move forward, I want to avoid gouging. Now, when you're doing the, the flat side, you don't have to worry about that. Pretty straightforward. You're not going to gouge doing that. You just hold it flat. But when you get it up on this angle, that's when things start to get a little more tenuous. You can get guides for these. I don't use them. I just do them by hand. But yeah, you got to be careful. That's about it with that. Now, in case you're looking for these chisels, they're in the chisels and carving tools section. Also on Solo Music Gear, these are the Tataki Nomi chisels. Uh, Japanese chisels, they are my favorite ones that I've used, period. Um, but I use them exclusively for, like I said, kind of the finer stuff where I want a really high quality piece of steel and a yeah, really nice finish. Uh, you'll see the next chisel that I sharpen here is my DeWalt utility chisel. Uh, <laughs> that's what I go with for kind of some of the gruntier work if you want, if you will, and uh, it works well. It works as well as most chisels, not, maybe not as nice as these ones, but works just fine. So uh, having nice chisels is helpful. I recommend these, but it's not entirely necessary to spend a bunch of money on fancy chisels if you only use them occasionally or if you don't do a lot of fine work with them. I'm working my way up 
through the grits here. I believe this one is 3,000 grit, and then I'll do a quick stint, and it gets quicker every time as you work your way up, but I'll do a quick stint on 6,000 grit, and then we'll test this guy out actually without even stropping it at first, so you can see just how sharp it gets from this. Here's our 6,000 grit. And then once we've done that, we'll do a quick strop, and it'll be perfectly ready to go. So this is the kind of thing where I, I don't really have to even push that hard to make it go through wood most of the time. It comes out of here with like a mirror polished finish basically on the fine edge that I'm using. And that's what you want to see. I take a little bit of extra time with this chisel just because I like these ones so much. And you can see me doing some figure eights and stuff to try and keep my surface flat so I don't have to take off more of my stone by flattening it. But... All in all, make sure your stones are flat when you're using them. But all in all, I don't have to worry about that too much. Like I said, these stones are fairly hard, so they last fairly long. So we'll kind of jump to the end here. After I've finished with the 6000, you can see the polish on there. You can see how shiny that is. And you can see how easily that takes hair off my arm now. It's maybe not that easy to see, but uh, it really just jumps off there. So I end up looking ridiculous after I'm done sharpening these things. But anyway... Then I finish off with the strop in the same way that I have been. A couple of rounds over the uh, the side with the compound with a little bit of pressure. And then I finish off, as always, on the raw leather with essentially no pressure. I'm just gliding it over there to make sure that that little fine edge is perfectly honed. And then I go ahead and test it again, which is kind of silly, really, because I already know it's bloody sharp. But... Uh, you know it's a compulsive thing and do it for the video and that just yeah the hair just springs off my arm there so we know that that's sharp enough that's ready to go if it's sharp enough to shave with it's sharp enough for woodwork now we're moving on to the other stones these are those Suhiro ones again but these are the S-Plex instead of the Cerax um, as I said I don't like these quite as much but they are really nice and you only need a couple of grits and they're very thick so they'll last a very long time. These are also in the files and rasp section on solomusicgear.com. I'm not sure why, again, but that's where they are right now. Now these chisels <laughs> are just from Home Depot, they're the DeWalt ones, but because of the way they're set up, they're very interesting to sharpen. They've got, of course, the two different sides. So the same concept applies, you just have to do one side at a time and make sure you get them nice and sharp. I've got two different grits of these stones, so I'm going to do this process on both. Uh, if you watch there, you can definitely see that I'm applying more pressure as I pull back, and much less as I push forward on those sharper edges, uh, when I've got the chisel up at an angle, because I, I don't want to gouge the stones. Simple as that. So I've got this thing sitting in a tray of sorts. This I got from a kitchen supply store um, here in Edmonton. And so I'm not really sure where to send you for that, but it shouldn't be that hard to find them. It's just designed to hold the water stone. It's got a kind of a trough in it to keep the water in because you need water. And the water, when you do this, gets quite muddy, um, both with the stone and with the filings, basically, the, the residue from the metal. So, yeah, you can see it getting muddy there. It's almost like I'm dissolving a brick, but that's not a problem that sludge, that residue on top, you don't really want to clean that off while you're doing this. You want that to stay there because it helps sharpen a little quicker. And yeah, that's how I do this one. I have two of these stones, but I didn't end up bothering with the, uh, the more coarse of the two. I didn't need to. This chisel was in good condition. I keep my chisels relatively sharp and I keep them in good condition if I can. And so no problems there. I'm going to do a quick strop on this one as well which is a little bit interesting because of the shape of this chisel. And who knows, maybe one of these days I'll do some dovetail work that requires that. But for now, it's just a good utility chisel, lots of blade area. And I use it for, well, all sorts of stuff. And that's how the process goes. All right, guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you now know what you want to get if you're looking to sharpen your chisels or your plain blades or your kitchen knives or anything like that because the same blocks work for everything and you can get something that ends up nice and shiny and fully capable of uh, slicing whatever you need it to and, and possibly stuff that you don't need it to. So be careful when you're playing with sharp tools. Brian, again, I know you're typing it, don't. 
Thanks for watching guys again. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please feel free to give the video a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. And remember to subscribe so you can see all these cool projects I'm working on out here, uh, especially now that I have my chisel sharp. Thanks again. Have a good one. I'll see you next time.